Welcome, this is Professor Jill Bolduc, and today I'm going to talk to you about two different types of metabolic pathways or subsets of metabolic pathways. We're going to call them catabolic and anabolic pathways. Like all metabolic pathways, these pathways are defined by the enzymes that make them. So the basic subunits of any pathway are the enzymes that come together. So I have a hypothetical pathway here, and it's consisting of three enzymes, one, two, and three. This pathway begins by acting on substrate A and making a final product D. But along the way, A needs to interact with its enzyme, its very specific enzyme, through the active site. A is converted by enzyme B into its product B. I'm sorry, A, I should say A interacts with enzyme 1 to make a product B. Now this B, being a product of enzyme 1, is also a substrate, a very specific substrate for enzyme 2. Now when it, when it interacts with enzyme 2, it's converted to a product C, but this product C likewise is a substrate for enzyme 3. Again, after going through the um, chemical reaction, it is converted to D. We have our final product, and this pathway now has converted all the A substrates that are present in the environment to products D. Okay, that's pretty much true for all metabolic pathways. So the metabolic pathways are represented here in blue that says metabolism. But some of these pathways are called catabolic pathways. Catabolic pathways. What catabolic pathways do is they take large molecules and break them up into smaller ones. So I'm showing you some food, nutrients that a cell will use it's going to go through a catabolic pathway. Here it says pathways, it's plural. And so it's going to take these large molecules and break them up into smaller molecules. Now what catabolic pathways have in common is by breaking chemical bonds to make smaller molecules, they're going to release energy, chemical energy. And that's going to be in the form, a usable form for the cells, and that's called ATP. Some energy is going to be released, but it's not usable, and it's going to be given off as heat. So that's catabolism. Now let's erase these marks and talk about anabolism. Anabolism is, uh, occurs through anabolic pathways. Should be two words, my pathway sort of got close. We're going to start with anabolic pathways. We're going to start with small molecules. These small molecules with the aid or assistance of ATP of energy, oops, there's my T of my ATP, we're going to convert those small molecules into larger macromolecules. So in this case, it's going to require energy that was provided by the catabolic pathways. So what I want you to remember is that cat catabolism breaks down large molecules and makes small molecules. In the process, they make ATP. Anabolic pathways takes that energy, that ATP, along with the small molecules and converts them into large molecules. So I want you to realize that these um, catabolism and, and anabolism, or catabolic pathways and anabolic pathways, are somewhat intertwined. Here's another picture that sort of shows the same thing. Oops, there goes my paper. Basically, it's showing you that catabolism is entering the cell. Um, it's releasing energy ATP. It's going to, the ATP is going to be taken up by anabolism or anabolic pathways, and it's going to convert that ATP back into ADP. So it's going to utilize that energy. What this slide shows is basically the recycling. Let me get my drawing tool. You're going to make ATP, and then you're going to 
to utilize the energy that's trapped into that molecule. And by doing that, you, can, can, you will convert ATP back into ADP with an inorganic phosphate. These inorganic phosphates need to then be chemically bonded back to ADP. We'll do that through catabolic reactions. So this energy is going to cycle back and forth. So let's talk about what the molecule of ATP and ADP look like. Okay, here is the ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now, we call it triphosphates is because they have three phosphate groups. Look at these negative charges. I'm going to circle all of them. Whoops, it was a pen. There. There's four negative charges. Now, if you remember from chemistry, negative charges repel each other. So just think of all the energy that is required to keep these oxygens so close to each other. That's the energy that's trapped into the molecule ATP. This molecule is very important to, to make, to drive anabolic reactions so that we can make all the macromolecules that all the cells need. Now, what does ADP have in common? You take this bond right here and you break it. That's going to give you a DP. And here's your inorganic phosphate. So basically you broke one covalent bond. Um, no, I forget where the bond is. I believe it's right here. And so you're going to have your molecule ADP and inorganic phosphate. And so you're going to have to put more energy to make that bond again. That energy is going to come from anabolic, I'm sorry, catabolic reactions. So this ATP, we'll see it again. Um, again, it's the currency of all cells. It's the energy that the cells recognize. That's it for the, the brief lecture on catabolic and anabolic pathways. What I want you to realize is the, um, the definition of ATP and ADP and how the energy is stored, that this is the, the molecule that stores energy. I want you to know the relationship between catabolism and anabolism.